and um, all right. and um, uh, Aaron there, Aaron Tweeten, Aaron with a double A. There is uh, the co he and I are co-organizers of this meeting, and so if you're new here, welcome to the group. And uh, we meet the first Tuesday of the month, so please uh, join us whenever you can, whenever you can. So. Um, Tonight, the big topic will be a, a nice WooCommerce walkthrough, a little bit of overview of WooCommerce and a walkthrough that Michael will do. Um, and uh, before we jump into that, Aaron was going to do a quick um, kind of uh, intro, a quick talk about WordPress 5.9 that just came out. So 5.9 came out on uh, last Tuesday, a week ago, right? So I'll turn it over to you, Aaron. All right, so uh, yeah, who here is, uh, has installed uh, 5.9 yet? Yeah, me too. Um, so there's, uh, there's been, uh, you know, the, the big thing about 5.9 was that we were gonna have the uh, full site editing uh, capability. And so I just wanted to quickly show what that's like and, uh, and uh, yeah, so let me let me share my screen. Let me figure this out. All right, where? Here we go. Does everybody see my screen? Yep. Okay. So um, so yeah, this is. Um, this is the new 20, uh, 20, 2022 uh, theme, and you can it basically comes uh, packaged with WordPress 5.9. And one of the big things you notice is if you have it installed, uh, instead of seeing here uh, on the upper left, instead of seeing uh, customize, you'll see edit site. And so I just kind of quickly wanted to show what what this looks like. Um, so if you click edit site, what they'll allow you to do is to edit uh, the site using the new uh, full site editing or block uh, editing uh, feature that's come with WordPress. So uh, as I'm hovering over here, there's some interface elements that if you've used the block editor before that look kind of familiar, uh, but there's some distinguish, uh, there's some differences here. Um, you know, you've got the list view, which is uh, something you can see in the, uh, in the block editor. Uh, what this does is it shows you how the entire, the entire site is basically made up of blocks. So instead of, uh, the old days where you would um, uh, write, uh, you would put uh, content in, uh, or you wouldn't, you, you would organize the theme in uh, using PHP files. Now you can pretty much use uh, blocks and they're, they're broken up into uh, HTML files. I don't want to go into too much uh, detail, maybe in a later, you know, a couple, couple months down the road, we'll, uh, go over it. But uh, what this allows you to do is to edit the theme without having to go into any code. Uh, one thing that I did notice, though, is that uh, the interface is a little bit confusing um, at first. Um, if you want to access stuff, you got to click over here to the uh, to open up the navigation and it basically gives you uh, three sections to choose from. You've got the site, the overall site. Then you have templates where this will show you the different templates. So for example, say I wanna edit a single post template. Uh, I'd wanna go over here and, and make some changes. Or if I want to change my 404 page, I could, I could go over here. Um, and so then if I want to make a change, you know, instead of it saying this page could not be found, I could say, uh, 
you know, maybe try a, a search, about maybe try a Snickers bar. Um, I can click save, and then what it will do is it will save this template. Uh, so then if I, um, if I try to do a, a search and can't, or try to go to a page that doesn't exist, I would see uh, this template. It's not a page, it's a template, which is kind of a, a new way of, of thinking. But you got to, you get, so you have your site. Oops, sorry. You have your site, you have your templates, and then you have your template parts. And so this is basically like the, the header and the footer and, and stuff like that. I think the thing that I find that when I was trying out full site editing uh, with the Gutenberg plugin, was that it allowed you to actually preview a page. So for example, I'm gonna to try to get out of this. This is another thing that's confusing. It's like, how do I get back to the, the website? You have to kind of click back a, a million times. So let's say I'm gonna click on this one post. So here I am, I'm on the block image post. This is just a, a WordPress data for testing out uh themes and let's say okay i want to edit the site so i go up here i click edit the site what i would like to do is to be able to edit that page that i'm looking at and a lot of times if you're using a page builder tool like divi or elementor or beaver builder you would actually see that but here what keeps happening is that wait a minute i'm back on the uh basically the main archive page and so in order to make that change i have to go back over here uh go to templates and then i have to i have to hope that i'm i'm picking the right one because as you can see there's okay here's the page template but then there's another page template and another page template and so it's it's kind of a, a thing where i'm not um it it needs it needs a little more polish and stuff but um, I think it's a, a it's an interesting step in a, a new direction. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show that off, and uh, that's pretty much it. Cool, you know. cool. And and then it's worth noting that you need a an FSC theme. Is that, that that's what that's what they call it, right? An FSC theme, or do they call it a block theme, or something like that? Or what's yeah. The, so yeah, and, and like there's they're, only they're calling it block themed now. Yeah, and they're, they're calling which is it, I, I. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that that's. Uh, yeah, they they seem to be calling it block themes now, and. Um, I, I'm not sure why. I guess the, the full site editing, you know, it's like, what does that mean sometimes? So. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, but it's a little bit, um, I mean, you know, lots of themes you can use the Gutenberg editor, so people might be confused. I mean, yeah. I use Cadence, which is not a block theme, but I use the block builder, I use Gutenberg, right? And so it's a little bit of a confusing name to call it block themes. But, um, and there's only, there's only a few, um, there's only a few block themes available in the repository at the moment, right? It's probably like 30 or 40, something like that. Yeah, it, I, it actually yeah. might be less than that for fewer yeah. than that. Um, I think what, like one thing I, I would like to show, you know, down, down the road if I get around to it is that it has been nice trying to create, trying to create your own theme, I think is, it's actually, it's really easy. Um, once you figure out what you have to do, the main the main hurdle though is to understand that it's it's radically different than what you're used to before. Um, the other nice thing is that like you could um, you could create like a very very basic minimal um, theme and then save a bunch of template parts export that data and then make a theme from the template parts that you put together. I like that feature a lot because uh, 
some of the stuff that I've been doing with the themes, I've, I've actually been looking at the, the block code to see what it's outputting and, and trying to uh, replicate that as much as possible. That way, you know, we'll get to where we want to make our theme a, a full site editing compatible. Uh, we'll be able to do that fairly easy. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Well, good. Thank you, Aaron. And um, all right. Uh, um, Did we lose him? Everybody, hello? I flight or freeze. I think we had a freeze. <laughs> I think he's back though. David? What's that? Yeah, we couldn't hear you. You went went out, but I think oh. you're moving on. Yeah, yeah, we're good. I, I I did get a I have an unstable connection message here, but I could hear me. <laughs> So, all right. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Take yeah, it I away. You, I think he froze up again. Okay, well, I'm Mike. I'm Mike from Spokane. I host Woo Wednesdays. And even though I'm the host, usually Woo Wednesdays have half the people are more knowledgeable about WooCommerce than I am. I'm not exactly sure why they asked me to uh, host this site. Maybe nobody else wanted to do it. But I've been co-host for oh, a little over two years, and I've been the only host for six, eight months now. So um, David asked me to give a, a, basically an introduction to WooCommerce. And so I've got a, um, uh, a, an outline I'm gonna share with you. And what I've done is I've just put this on a WordPress site page. And I'll share it in a minute, but I wanna tell you a little bit about this site. This site I'm building to support these types of meetups. And as we go through this content, um, I'm sharing all this stuff here and you can walk through the outline, but instead of trying to put all the little links into the chat and try to get them, they're all going to be on this page. You're welcome to all of it, including the photos, which are on there, uh, but uh, they're free photos and they're, and I only, only use photos that didn't require attribution, but I put attribution in there where, because that's just a courtesy thing. Uh, but anyway, you're welcome to, to that information. Now, as I was saying earlier, there's uh, people more knowledgeable than me. And one of them in this group is Eric Luthard. And uh, I just wanna talk to Eric for just a minute. Eric, Halifax gave me your, um, your, your presentation from last week about uh, uh, customizing and optimizing. Yeah. Um, so I, I put the link at the bottom, if that's okay. Yeah, that's just fine. Just came in or I would have asked you ahead of time because I can yank it off quick, quick enough. No, it's fine. Okay, very, very good. Well, I'm going to share this link for everybody to take a look at. We'll just walk through the basics of WooCommerce. And so you can follow along if you go to the chat. And I will share the screen in a little bit when we come to a couple little areas. Uh, so first of all, uh, every, most people know about WordPress. You wouldn't be here if you didn't know WordPress. Uh, WooCommerce is an e-commerce platform that integrates with WooCommerce open source software. Uh, it is uh, reported to be like over a million installs. Uh, depending on who you talk to, there's 25, 30% of all e-commerce e uh, platforms is WooCommerce. It's a, it's a big community. There's a lot of support. When you combine WooCommerce people and WordPress community, you get a lot of support in this community. And that's one of the great things about WooCommerce and WordPress is that it's, uh, it's, it's a very a uh, generous and giving community that's they're, they're free with their time and it's free. Now, most of you probably know the difference between uh, wordpress.org, wordpress.com, some of the other platforms. And you probably know that there's a free wor uh, WooCommerce and there's a paid one. There's free plugins and extensions to Woo and there's paid ones. We'll get to that in just a little bit. So moving on is, okay, how does it work? Okay. You got your WordPress installation. I think everybody knows that you have to have some hosting, either it's a provided hosting or a paid hosting. You get a WordPress installation, and then you go to the plugins, or you can go to the repository, and you load the WooCommerce plugin. And it will automatically install to your WordPress installation, and you are ready to set up a e-commerce store. It's free, it's automatic, and it integrates very, very well. Um, is it right for everybody? Not necessarily, but what do you get? As soon as you get a, a, 
a, a, e, a WooCommerce store, you get the plugin, and before you do the install or when you do the install and you start doing the settings, it you get product pages, you get shopping cart pages, you get checkout pages, you get in invoicing capability, you get shipping rates that can be calculated for you, you have taxes that can be calculated for you. We'll get into the taxes a little bit because it's, taxes are a bit of a sticky wicket for us all, but they it integrates with pay, payment gateways and a whole lot more. And it's customizable and it's extendable and the you know the kind of the world's a limit. And that's the other problem with it though. It can do so much, it can take forever to learn it all. And so depending on what you're trying to do with it will determine the decisions that you, how you're gonna configure and how you're gonna set up a WordPress WooCommerce store. So what does it cost? Well, as I just said, it's free. Uh, I work with some people now, they're doing free WordPress site, free themes, free WordPress, free plugins, nothing, it doesn't cost them anything except their time and you need a domain name and you need a hosting service. And I can even get the domain names and the hosting service for free, but there's a lot of reasons you wanna do that. You wanna control your own domain and you probably wanna host it yourself, uh, but that's an individual decision that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, when you host yourself, you own it, you have control of it. And it's the beautiful thing about open source software. You can take it, you can extend it, you can modify it, you can resell it. I think when you resell it you, under the Creative Commons, you have to attribute that you got it from somewhere, but really you don't have to pay anything. And so you, it's, 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 it's wonderful. You can do a whole lot with it. But with that extra power, with, with that extra ability to change your store around, change the, the, the commerce, uh, the, your, your WooCommerce store all around, there's always the issue of what does it take to maintain it? Always the issue about what are the security risks? What are the chances of the site breaking? How do you do to, what do you got to do to keep updating your site? So there's a little bit more to taking, uh, to running a WooCommerce store than maybe if you were to just put your product on Amazon or you, you got a Shopify account. Now, WooCommerce would be cheaper, right? But you have more responsibility. You have to watch it. You have to make sure your themes are updated. You have to make sure your plugins updated. There's always a risk you get hacked. If you're on a Shopify or you're an Amazon site, they pretty much take care of all that stuff, but they also limit you. There's only so much you can do. They don't let you change their pages around that much. And, um, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, but there's always a chance of big, you can get banned. You can get censored. They don't like your product. They don't like your politics. They don't like, and we're all been hearing it lately. And Amazon will block people, Shopify will block people, some of these payment games will block uh, uh, you. But with WooCommerce and your own WordPress installation, it's yours. You might have a problem with a hosting company, but you can just migrate that away and you just keep going. They can't really take that away from you. So it's a little bit of a trade trade off. So the, the biggest thing is, is that there's a, it's free, there's a lot of support, and even though it may be a little bit more than, than dealing with a, uh, a Shopify or an Amazon and some of the many other uh, uh, e-commerce platforms, uh, competing platforms that are available, there's a lot of reasons why it's not that big a mountain to climb. It's more of a molehill. It does take a little bit of a commitment. If you don't want to learn WordPress, you don't want to learn WooCommerce, you're either best hiring somebody or using a, a self-contained platform where they take care of those things for you. So let's move on. How, is WooCommerce difficult to use? It was before. Uh, it depends a little bit about what you're trying to do. It depends on like, how are you using it and the knowledgeable the people that are gonna maintain your site. Um, when you install uh, WooCommerce, there's a, a uh, installation wizard that pretty much takes you through it. And I, I'm gonna show you this in a little bit later. We'll, we'll loop back around. Uh, so you, it, it just prompts you, okay, where do you live? Or what are you going to sell? Uh, you know, how are you going to do it? What's your email? All that stuff. It, it, you just fill it in the blanks and it sets it up for you. And then you'll have your settings that you can go through. And we'll look at that in a little bit too. And you can set your settings about, okay, what kind of products, you know, how, how are you going to do your shipping? All of that is pretty set up. It is a little tricky in some areas though. Um, email deliverability can be a problem. Shipping can be a little complicated. Taxes. You know, taxes are always complicated and it's not necessarily Wu's fault. And I was having a conversation with Dave a little earlier about how, how do you do that? All these different jurisdictions, if you're selling a lot of product across a lot of jurisdictions, mm -hmm. keeping up with the changing tax rates, that's a problem. Now, there are solutions to that we will talk about in a little bit here. 
most people that are, are just starting out beginners, they're not selling across the nation. They're either selling in their community. They only have one or two uh, tax codes that they got to worry about, and they can do it very manually and, and not have to pay for an extension. We'll get into that in a little bit too. Uh, but the one thing is that even though there's problems or there could be some complications and stuff that you'll scratch your head, okay, well, how do I configure this? There are so many resources in the community, mostly for free, that if you're really committed to doing this, you're going to be able to figure this out because you've got a, a good path forward. So I have got two links if you're following along where I've just talked about is WooCommerce uh, difficult to use? And one is WooCommerce setup wizard instructions. And the second one is configuring uh, WooCommerce. Now, the, I also have a video at the end of this, which Eric did is a great one to follow. He'll take you through it too. Uh, I put these links here because this is WooCommerce themselves telling me how to go through it. I was gonna come in and go ahead and put a couple of screenshots and, and kind of take you through and show you how to do it. But I figure why rewrite the people that actually built this thing. And so we'll come back about the installation. We'll just do a quick run through. Now, this is an introduction. I'm not planning to get real technical here. Uh, we can, if we have time, we can probably handle some uh, technical questions because there's some very technically knowledgeable people that are in the group that can probably answer it. Me, when they ask me, I always gotta go poke around a little bit and you know, I'll get the answer in a week type of deal. So, but anyway, we'll come back to that. But to the, the configuration and the, uh, the, the installation, the configuration, and even the optimization is much, much easier now than it was three, four years ago. And they're evolving. Now, WooCommerce just hit their 10 year anniversary. I think that was like October, November. Um, well, the first three or four years, it was Woo themes and they sort of evolved in this e commerce platform. The progress they're making in the last couple of three years, I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. It's still not as easy as if you could just pay Shopify extra money and have them take care of it, but you own it. And so it's a, it's, 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 some, it's a decision everybody has to make for themselves, but I, I want everybody to have in their mind this understanding of the, um, of the difference between the rent and the buy, which is the next section after the configuring WooCommerce that comes, how does Woo compare to other digital platforms? Well, it complies favorably in some areas and, and not so much in others. And, it, and a lot of it depends about your product base, more so who's running your site. If you have somebody that doesn't wanna know the basics of WooCommerce is running it and they're lazy and they're not gonna keep your updates up. And they're gonna, because the one thing about um, when you have an online e-commerce store, people know you're dealing with money. Now, hopefully you're dealing with a lot of money because you have a successful store. It doesn't usually start out that way. It usually it takes a couple years to build out an e-commerce, but anytime there's money involved and credit cards are involved, you're a target. We'll talk about that in a little bit either, a little bit sooner. But what I did, if you roll through this, and I've got a little bit of text, it kind of talks about why you want to kind of control your stuff so somebody doesn't ban you because you're A, your left, A, B, your right, or somewhere in between. It's not good enough. They'll block you, right? You own WooCommerce. You decide the hosting. They can't take that away from you. And I, I think that's a big... Uh, I think it's a great security issue. So, okay, so what are some of the competing e-commerce platforms? Now, this page, and I appreciate everybody being uh, guinea pigs for this presentation. Uh, I was gonna get into some of these competing platforms to go for the pros and the cons. And I didn't even get all of them that are out there. If I spend two or three minutes on each one of them, I'm probably gonna be close to an hour. And I just, it's, it's just too much in depth, but I do wanna point out a couple of the big guys. Amazon and Shopify are huge. On those platforms, you do it right. You can. You don't necessarily have to do a WooCommerce. It might not be right for you. I suggest to people that you don't need one option. You should probably have your own site. You can still sell on Amazon. You might still want to sell on Shopify. Uh, but a lot of these products, these, these platforms, they've got their pros and cons. And some of them have some great uh great pros. It, they could be right for you. Uh, WooCommerce isn't right for everybody, but it's right for a lot of people. And I, and I think it could be right for you if you don't mind making a, a minor commitment. I mean, you don't need to know code. That's the thing about it. It helps, or it helps that you know somebody that knows code, but you can get an e-commerce store up through WordPress or uh, WordPress and WooCommerce in a day, a few hours. Now you'll want to tweak it you got to think about your product pages. You got to think about how you're going to present stuff. Most of your ability to sell has more to do about the quality of your pictures 
and the how you describe your products and how you get it in, into the mix, get people to come to your site, than it is operating the site itself. But the site can break. You can have conflicts between plugins. You can have conflicts between upgrades of WordPress or PHP or some of the things that are in the behind the scenes, and it, 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 you have to stay on it. And if you are doing your own installation and you're running your own site, that falls on you or whoever you have helping you do it. The great thing about this community, there's enough people. You do a couple of these uh, uh, WooCommerce and WordPress specific meetups, you're going to find somebody to help you through most of the stuff, especially if you're a smaller site. Now, a lot of the people that will come in here are trying to start a new site and they've never done it before. They're not trying to be ESPN. They're not trying to be Amazon.com. They're going to be a barbershop or a landscaping company or a plumbing company. And you can put those kind of sites out very quickly. You might be selling jewelry or your personal art. That, that's not a that's not a big mountain to climb. I think most of most people here could probably, without even knowing, you could probably handle it. But you can't just like, oh, I'm going to spend uh, four hours and then walk away. And six months later, it might not be working right. It's going to take a little bit of follow through. So anyway, um, the one thing that I wanted to point out here is Salesforce.com has a commerce cloud. They're a big outfit, and there's a couple other big ones in here. Uh, everyone knows that the e-commerce is right where the rubber hits the road. It's where it's that point of transaction. And if you can facilitate that, you can get on both sides of the of the transaction. So more and more people are moving towards this e-commerce space, especially with the pandemic, right? You know, nobody really wants to go out as much anymore. You, you know, they're trying to make a living. It's it's uh, there's a big pivot in the last year, two years to um, uh, to online uh, commerce. And so I wanted to give a, 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 a list of competing platforms that you might check out. Uh, I favor WooCommerce. I, I've kind of been convinced that it's the future because they're evolving and they're supporting it. You know, that's the thing is, and they may, may not get it right, but they're, you know, they're patching their security links. There's a, there's a new release coming out almost every month. A lot of time it's just identifying uh, uh, security vulnerabilities. We'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, in a little bit down the road here, but uh, but I like it and I like that I can control it. Now, some of these option here, I think you can control too, uh, but part of what will happen with this page is we're gonna do an in-depth analysis of each of these in comparison to Woo. And so in the next couple, three months, this page will you know, evolve. Uh, it's, you can't reach this page from my site. It's not, it's published, but it's not, I don't have an, the menu navigation because that site's evolving. Even though I'm doing an outline, it's going to support uh, uh, meetups. This page, you can't get to it from there. You have to go through this link, and then you can get to that page. But you can kind of see that, you know, this is, a, I just built it last month. And I just built this page, like, well, I think I started on Sunday, so a couple days. So I'll have to figure out all the edit and the typographicals. But there's more to go with the competing programs so I can detail it so you can make an uninformed decision about whether you want to go with Woo or you want to go with Etsy or you want to go with Shopify. For some people, I recommend they go that way because they're never going to make a commitment to maintaining their sites. And that's one of the things you have to do if you're going to self-host. You have to maintain, keep it updated, keep those, uh, you know, you got to keep those plugins updated and then you got to resolve the conflicts when they occur and they'll occasionally occur or have somebody to do it or you're better off not getting into it because you'll just have problems. So what can you sell on it? You can sell a ton of stuff. It's like pretty much everything. It's uh, it's really amazing. You can, you can do crypto, you can do physical products, digital products, memberships, events, bookings, subscriptions, educational offerings, learning tools. It's uh, streams, music. It doesn't really matter. It's like you can do that. And most of you can do it in core. Now, even though when I say core, I mean, that's the free plugin. Now the free plugin is great. And for most people, you can get it all done. But if your business is growing, there's lots of reasons why you might wanna pay for a few paid plugins just to make your life easier. And, and I'm not gonna get into details about which plugins you should or should not buy because I don't know anyone's business. But I do wanna let everybody know that the capability to expand the functionality of your website and to make it easier to do is those tools are there. Now, whether it costs you an extra couple hundred bucks for a couple of plugins, you know, that's a case by case basis. And if you come to Woo Wednesdays or some of these other meetups, 
you know, there's open discussions. It's a great forms to figure it out and to help you make informed decisions over time. But I just want to let you know that there's pretty much nothing you can't really sell off off of WooCommerce. I mean, I'm assuming within the law, and I'm not even sure if that's a, a, a barrier. But anyway, uh, common questions. Okay, there's I got a few common questions before this. A big one everybody asks me: What theme do you use now? Uh, Aaron a little earlier was talking about the uh, full site editing. Now it used to be if you were block based, you had some block editor stuff and some of the classic. Now we have the full site editor and some people are calling it the block editor and some people are calling it, you know, Gutenberg and some people are calling it the hybrid, but the future is really in this full site editing. That's where it's gonna go. But that was just released a week ago, right? It's the, the latest version. And so people starting out brand new right now, I, I can't really put them in the full site editors. And I think there is, I think he was right. There's 35 or 40 uh, full site editing themes available right now but they got 40 installs or 100 installs right a, a, a theme like astra has a million installs and it's supported and they're and they're coming out with their full themes too the site that you see this page on is cadence and cadence thinks they're going to have their full site editing theme out in two weeks it's a timing thing I mean, the knowledgeable people, some of the developers, and I'm guessing Aaron and probably Eric and David, you know, they could probably handle full site editing theme right now because they're knowledgeable around it. But if you're just starting out, I think you use a, a more reliable theme. I don't think you jump into the full site editing. I think in the next six months, year, 18 months, that's where it's all going to be. You'll transcend to it. But to go with that uh, full site editing theme now, I, I'd exercise caution because all the plugins haven't really adapted it to it. I'm not really sure where WooCommerce is with that adaption. It's just the early adopters, the bleeding edge people, that's for them. Most people, personally, I'd advise give it a little time. Now, I use Cadence for some uh, stuff. Um, Bloxy's a new one, WP Ocean. There is the default WordPress theme called, uh, uh, I guess it's, gonna, it's now it's called, uh, WP 2022. That's a full site editor. So I'd be, I'd exercise caution there. Now, the one thing I want to tell you everybody about for sure is to think, look at is storefront. Now I use storefront. I had a couple other people use storefront about three years ago and it was a problem. Uh, and I even talked to the Lou people and they said, yeah, we, we got some problems, but that was three years ago. So it's a movement target. Storefront is owned by WooCommerce. WooCommerce is owned by automatic. Automatic owns WordPress.com. Real quick, like WordPress.com is the hosting and the uh, tailored WordPress.org software used in their environment. WordPress.org is the free, fully, you do whatever you want with. Um, storefront is WooCommerce's default theme. That means the WooCommerce people who are building and developing on that. So you have to really consider that because if you're gonna work in a WooCommerce environment, the Woo a theme, their default theme storefront is something that you should probably consider. Now, Astra is a good bet. There's probably about 20 themes, but when you get into the theme universe, there's probably 10,000 themes. What I will caution you, if you're getting ready to start a new store, is do not get an old theme that hasn't been updated in four years. Don't get a theme that only has 50 installs. Get one that's modern block based theme and now there's some confusion about what block means right and and, and it, it, it's evolving that's always the case when as things change but the block editors when you're using the elements of building a page or a post you're using blocks you put in a block that for text put in a block for images you put a blocks in for 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 formatting you put blocks in for containers you want to make sure you have a modern theme that is, has that capability in it because that's the future you, the, the, in the past, if you're not around WordPress, maybe four or five years ago, they went from the classic editor to, they called it Gutenberg at the time, and now it, they call it the block editor. Uh, in most WordPress circles, Gutenberg means the uh, beta plugin, all the stuff they're going to add to uh, the core WordPress, the block editor in the next year or two is, is typically the Gutenberg plugin now. But now they're moving into this full site editor. And so you have to be a little bit careful there because 
the support, the plugins and everything hasn't really caught up with all the functionality that is in the full site editor now. Sorry if that's a little long and confusing, uh, but it's just, it's a moving target. There, there's new product, there's new functionality, there's new experiences always coming and where you position yourself, if you're just doing a landscaping or a dentist office, or you're doing a bowling alley, you don't need the cutting edge stuff any of it. You need stable, reliable, and easy. And so I, I, but get something fairly modern, fairly well supported, because if it's not supported, then you always run the risk of, of, of hackers. You always don't have site vulnerabilities. And I'll talk about this in a minute, but you know, when it comes to, well, I'll just wait till my next question here. I, well, first we'll just go through this. Uh, what does Woo integration mean? It, it means several things. Anymore, the hosting companies, and this is where the, com the big server computer that will host your stuff, and most people will host their WordPress site on a server. Now you can do it on your own, own computer, and you can do it a couple of different ways, but I recommend a hosting service because it's very, very competitive anymore and they can handle a lot of the security stuff. Um, but integration can also mean these plugins. Now there's a ton of plugins, like tax plugins, uh, marketing newsletters, like uh, MailChimp's one of them. Um, there's shipping, there's uh, uh, print on demand shipping and there's print on demand products that you can be done that integrate into WordPress core. And what that means is that these services these plugins are already customized to work within woocommerce now, are they they're not all perfect and some of them are glitchy but instead of having to write code every time you try to do something like that to have a plugin well, let's just say it's a tax plugin where they're going around the country every month figuring out what all the tax rates are and doing that for you it's hard to beat that for something that might cost 50 or 100 dollars a year and oftentimes it's free a lot of mailchimp is free up until you get to 2000 uh email uh, subscribers. So if you're, if you're integrating a marketing letter to help promote your website, WooCommerce has a, or excuse me, uh, uh, MailChimp has a WooCommerce integrated plugin that you just download, plug in, you know, put in your little information and, and off you go. Now there's a learning curve to all of these things. Some are high, some are low, uh, but it's the potential of this open source uh, an environment that we're working in, which is why you want to want to think about this, uh, about this, uh, be aware of this uh, additional functionality that's is, is really great. It's, it has a lot of power. Uh, so anyway, I made the point on the what integration is. Most people can figure it out, but integration means a lot of different things depending where you are, kind of in the WordPress WooCommerce food chain. Okay, so security is always a big thing, and, and people ask me about this and. And there are people, and I refer to Eric, who's really good at security. I'm not so good at security, but I do know a few things about it. And one of the things is that it's never enough security. Now, cyber crimes are growing. It's, the trend is it's undisputable. We have more and more. This denial of service stuff, this ransomware stuff. And, the, and the people think, oh, well, ransomware is, you know, it's only the, like the big oil pipeline company or the big meat. No, the majority of uh, the most of them are under ten thousand dollar threats ransomware uh, so they're going after the little guys more and more i say that because when you look at your risk profile your risk profile is more than just your plugin and more about your wordpress installation it's the it's passwords it's who's on your site you know are you touching credit cards and incidentally i don't advise anybody to ever take credit cards on your site you you, you really want to use a payment gateway and be a little bit insulated from that if you start sh sharing credit cards numbers on your site, I, I just I just can't advise that. I think you're asking for trouble, and you're you're not in the business of processing transactions. I wouldn't pretend. You just make sure you use a PayPal, you use a, a Stripe, or use a, a Square, and don't take credit cards. Uh, but you also are going to be end up taking uh, information off the site, which was a question I got this morning or this afternoon, and we'll come back to that in a minute. The bigger thing is is that you know that any Putty that handles money. Anybody that's in business has the potential to be tent, uh, targeted. They'll target you for lots of reasons, not just because it's money. They don't like you, right? They just, it's political. It's, it's weird why people will do stuff. They're just, they will hack a site just to prove they can do it. They'll lock you out. You'll get ransomware. It's just, so WooCommerce is concerned about security, but they can't do everything. And, and, and WooCommerce is just the plugin portion of it. So 
your WooCommerce could be keeping it up, but you're not updating your WordPress site or you're not updating your, your other uh, plugins on your site, which is most of the time, most of the updates, they're plugging security vulnerabilities. But there's more to that on the security because it's where you host. If you're in shared hosting, it's a little bit more risky than dedicated hosting. You know, your hosting provider could be the problem. You know, the, the, the people that are running your site could be the problem. You know, your payment gateway could get hacked. To say that you're, you're going to, and a lot of times they say that, you know, WooCommerce does it, all of them do it. It's a secured payment gateway. Well, my gee, think about it, man. It's like, who, who hasn't been hunt? The CIA gets hacked. The Pentagon gets hacked. All the big banks get hacked. You know, Target gets hacked. So what makes you think WooCommerce won't get hacked someday or WordPress? So be aware that when you think about running an e-commerce site, the security aspect of it is something you just have to spend a little time with. And a lot of it is about password protection and two-factor authentication, keeping your plugins up. Uh, but you're not going to get a complete security solution, a digital solution, by just because you bought some plugin. I mean, there are plugins. There's like, I, won't, I, I don't want to name them because I'm not sure which ones are the best ones, but there's a, there's a bunch of security dedicated plugins you can add to your WordPress site that kind of works with with the secure transactions and you, and you want to think about it. You want to have an SL certificate for, you know, that helps if everybody knows what that is. That's the part that we're, it, it, it does end to end encryption is what it really does. And you, you have, if you have that on that site, that helps secure, especially e-commerce sites. But the whole question of security is an ongoing thing. It's not a one-time solution. Uh, one and someone in the other, another meetup, I think it was a Portland meetup. He said, it's a process because it's a moving target. Every time you turn around, somebody, they figured out something else. Last year, they had the big increase in vulnerabilities and plugins. So, so enough about security. I don't mean to scare everybody. You can be thinking about it, but a little bit of focusing on security can go a long, long way. All right. So if you get a, an e-commerce store, you make the plunge, you buy it, uh, or you, you, you get a WordPress site, you put e-commerce, you get a few sites in there. Well, what about support? Well, the paid version of WooCommerce has support. You can call them up and get tickets. Now, there's mixed reviews in that department. Um, sometimes they're good. Some people say they're not so, so good. I'm kind of on this mission to just do the help people with the free versions, so I've never used it. There are other people, if you go to these meetups, they'll tell you, yeah, it's... But the paid version does have support, and eventually they do probably get around to it. So for the 50 or 100 bucks a, a, a year that they probably charge for the paid version, uh, that could be well worth it to you. But if you don't want to do that, there's also the community is big. The, the, the people that support this. So you can go to uh, wordpress.org, which is they call it the repository, and go WooCommerce, plug in, and there's going to be support information there people hacking out their problems and and generally when you're starting out any problem you run into someone's run into it before and there's a solutions probably sitting there but also on wordpress.com or uh, woocommerce.com they've got a, uh, a a developer's blog and then they got a running your business blog they've got a ton of information uh, that's available and there's these wordpress meetups now i'm just run i run one wordpress meetup and i run one woocommerce meetup but there, these things are all over the country at all hours of the day and night. Um, I'm in a bunch in England, a bunch in Canada, and I'm in a ton of them across the country. And if you're just getting started and you get into those meetups, it won't take you very long to figure out who, who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. And so you can get a lot of free support through these meetups. But in addition to that, there are a ton of blogs. There's a ton of uh, websites that are just entirely focused on the subject. So you can get the information. It's a question of how hard do you, you want to do your own, own research or do you want somebody holding your hand? And you know, paid WooCommerce will hold your hand for a little bit. They may be a little slow, but they're probably going to take care of most of a beginner's problems. OK, what are product attributes and variable pricing? OK, that's a pretty simple question. It's a little bit tricky figuring out how you do this with WooCommerce, but once you know it it's, it, it, it's pretty easy. An attribute just describes a product. You're selling tennis shoes, but they come in different sizes or they come in different colors, right? That's your attributes. Okay, it's a blue tennis shoe and it's got fancy, uh, super duper fancy laces. Okay, so that's, it just, the attribute describes a particular product. 
the variable pricing says, okay, well, you go, we got the shoes there with standard shoelaces, and then we got the shoes with the super duper shoelaces, and they're and they're five dollars more or ten dollars more, right? That's your variable pricing. WordPress and Core allows you to do that. And once you figure out how to do that, it, it's really pretty easy. And so when they go to your web, your product pages, and you know, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, you can go in, you can set a product picture to product page. You can say, I got this, I got them in orange, I got them in neon pink, and I got them in black. And then you got a drop down menu and it'll and they pick it and it'll have, and they can have, you can control the pricing per choice. That gives you a little bit of, um, you know, you can filter out your, your, the product selection for your customer and set your prices accordingly. What kind of personal information does Woo retain? Okay, I think this is a question Eric, asked, or not Eric, David asked me today, and I got to thinking about it a little bit. And I, but because Eric's presentation last week, WooCommerce allows you to delete all particular information. Now, you can't really delete someone's information, like their mailing address, if you haven't shipped them the product yet, right? So WooCommerce lets you set the time that uh, you are going to retain this information. And this is a little bit important because in the last couple, three years, the question of our privacy policy is the terms and conditions is that any information you collect on a visit to your website, you're entitled by law in a lot of states, and it's becoming the, the case that you, you have legal liabilities if you don't, what you do with that information. Now, the, if you have cookies on your site, you're collecting information. If you use Google Analytics, you're collecting information. Even if you're not selling it or doing anything with it, you're collecting information. If you're taking email addresses, and even by extension credit card uh, uh, information, then you're collecting information. You, 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 hey, it, they're buying girls' clothes, right? Or they're buying, you know, what, what, I don't know what they call the the pots, uh, the CBD oils or whatever, whatever. They're collecting that information, and you have it there. And so you're supposed to say in a privacy policy on your website, and I'm personally I advise putting that on every single of your pages, even your uh, product pages say, hey, we only collect information necessary to disturb the, the product. We don't, we delete the information after six months unless we hear from you again if you want to return. A lot of people, they keep it forever because if you call back, we got your sizes, we got, we're ready to go. They can do checkout much quicker. That's a decision you make between you and yourself. But understanding personal information and how you, how you, uh, you collect it, how you store it, and whether you delete it or not later on is something you have to really think about as a, as a responsible store owner. Okay, how does WooCommerce handle taxes? Uh, <laughs> this, is a, this is a kind of a, a, a bucket of worms in some ways because it's not really Woo. It's our whole tax structure, right? It's like, I mean, you're on one side of the street, it's one way. On the other side of the street, it's something different. You go from state to state, from city to city. How do you keep up with all that? Now, WooCommerce, you can set tax rates and you can set them ma manually. So if you're at a farmer's market and you're selling stuff and you're selling only in your little community, you can. it's pretty easy to set a tax rate. But if you're selling across the country, you've got a successful, hey, you know, they like your art, they like your jewelry, you got some fancy t-shirts and put suddenly people are buying them from 30 of the 50 states, you might have some sales tax challenges. And so what I did is listed some of the more popular uh, uh, tax plugins. And they're either pl plugins or applications. Like a big one is Tax Cloud, Tax Jar, Alvalera, WooCommerce Shipping and Tax, which I looked at, it looks like that's a free one. Um, I've never used it, Quinero, and then also the the like the uh, QuickBooks and the other competing people that do bookkeeping and accounting for people. They're integrating with WooCommerce now, and almost all of them have WooCommerce integration for tracking the tax. If you are doing a lot of sales across multiple jurisdictions and going into different countries and stuff, you probably want to look at one of these tax plugins. I can't rank them. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I can tell you there's probably three times as out there that will work. Some are cheap, some are not so cheap, some are easy, some are not so easy. But with not knowing what your typical tax profile is, it's hard to say which one would be right for you anyway. But I just want to let you know those tools are available for you because if you're, you know, if you're selling 10,000 products in a, a month or six months, the tax headaches, it's not worth it for 100 or 200 bucks. 
you get one of these in there, let it integrate, and it'll generate your tax reports. And I think that's what David was asking me earlier. It was the automation part of it. It wasn't the tax part of it that, uh, you know, nobody wants to go calculate tax rates on every darn sale, uh, especially if you're starting to get busy. Okay, at the bottom here, I've got uh, uh, where to learn more. And this is the thing about the community. There is a ton of places. And so I list wordpress.com and the wordpress.org. And I did the uh, WordPress org to the WooCommerce support ticket page where you can see all the questions people have asked about their problems, how they were solved, or the ones that are being solved. Uh, Business Bloomer is a very dedicated WooCommerce uh, website, tons of good information there. The Kinsta blog. Now, the Kinsta blog and the Astra blog, these are, uh, well, the Kinsta blog is a hosting company, Astra blog is a uh, theme widely adopted theme. And they do uh, write-ups on WooCommerce because they know so many of their customers are, are there because of the e-commerce. So they help their, uh, their clients by giving in better information about uh, how to use Woo with either the, their server or with their blog. And it, it, there's useful information to be found there. And they make that available to free. Um, there's one I found while looking get, getting ready for this presentation, I found this WooKeeper. And it's a WooCommerce information resource. And man, there's a lot of stuff there. So I'd highlight that one. I, I just came across it. I haven't gone deep into the articles at all, but man, they're covering a lot of subjects. And I suspect there's going to be some good stuff there. Okay, so back to uh, uh, what other resources? Facebook. Now I'm in a couple of uh, WordPress and Cadence meetups, and I think I'm in a two WooCommerce communities. So I went looking for uh, Facebook, because it's easier for people to seem to work on Facebook. They ask a question on Facebook, three or four knowledgeable people get in there, get a debate, especially in the groups that are dedicated to uh, WooCommerce or dedicated Woo to WordPress, you don't get a lot of noise. They may not be right, they may not be wrong, but they're not, you know, it's not ugly. It, we all know how social media can be. So I put in uh, five um, uh, WooCommerce focused uh, Facebook groups. Now I found a couple that were like, well, at least one was 54,000. No one had posted to it in a month. So all of these, they had at least 10 a day or something. So if you really want to kind of understand WooCommerce and, uh, and you want, you kind of want to get into this com committee, uh, this community, I advise join a couple of those groups and let those, some of the comments come through your feed and every once in a while, oh, that's how they're handling shipping. Oh, that's how they're handling their formatting. And you'll, you know, by osmosis, by just hanging around, You'll, you'll get insights. And the deeper you get into this, the easier it gets. There's always going to be challenge. It's a, it's a process. But those are good resources. Also, a lot of people in this digital uh, WordPress community and Woo, they like Slack. I never really quite got, I'm in a four, three or four Slack channels. I can't say I use it, but there's a dedicated WooCommerce Slack channel. And that link is there. Uh, and if you see the page there. And then... Um, but below that is Eric's uh, presentation at Halifax last week. So I put the link to his, um, his YouTube video. It's actually the Halifax uh, YouTube video and the link to his slide deck. And that's a, that's a good one. He's, he really knows his stuff. I think he focused on um, uh, integrating with uh, print on demand. Uh, but yeah, well worth your time if you're going to do that. And then the last one here is the Woo Wednesdays. That's my meetup that I run. That's, uh, I got the link to the meetup.com stuff. Welcome anytime, beginner, advanced, expert, anytime. So I'm gonna stop here for just a minute, see if there are any questions. And, oh, did someone, okay, I haven't been monitoring the chat. Uh, I shared a page that's got all the links on it. And I will share it again, answering that last question right there. So the links are towards the bottom of this page. Okay, I'm going to run through this, these comments here real, real, I mean, are we doing okay, David? Are we, is this going all right, or Aaron? Okay. Yeah, we're good. Pay fabric. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. Okay. Uh, Did you want to share that pay fabric generally there? Or? I, I don't know. I, I can't recommend it, but I'll, I, I'm going to add it to my list. Uh, I 
Let's see. Yeah, I didn't get too much into the pavement gateways and there's a bunch of them. You can, uh, you know, some payment gateways, they don't allow some products and the other ones, and uh, they can be a little bit pricey, but I don't know. I, when a customer comes to your site and they want to pay with a Visa, they want to pay with PayPal, or they want to pay with Stripe, you know, you kind of want to be able to handle all comers. Uh, we, I like Square for some of my customers because they do as much live as they do online. Uh, Stripe uh, seems to integrate better with, with WooCommerce. And there's also the WooCommerce gateway itself, which is built on Stripe. And so some professionals think that you're better off just using Stripe, um, but you know it's all evolving. They got a couple new ones here. So can maybe I, so someone can't see the, uh, the defense, the, the WooCommerce page. Can anybody see it? I'm seeing it. Okay. Any, so is there someone, go ahead and un, uh, uh, unmute your mic if you still can't see the. There's someone in there saying they still can't see the page. Yeah, I don't see the share or if you're sharing your desktop. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, I put a link. I put a oh, link. and the link. Never mind. I put a link so I didn't have to put all this information into the chat as we're going. So if you look at the link and you go roll down there, you're, you're going to have each topic in pretty much summarizing what I said, hopefully more articulate than when I than my rambling. And then, But at the bottom, there's going to be the, uh, uh, the links to these uh, resources. So, so do you think that um, if you just took um, Stripe and didn't do PayPal, I mean, with Stripe, you can, you're can you basically taking all the major credit cards. You're taking yeah. MasterCard, Visa, Discover, Amex, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that you would lose people by not having PayPal as an option? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't use Stripe. I use Square. And we've used PayPal. It, 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 but you still, even with Square, you're still just take with Square, you're taking those major credit cards. I, I suspect it's going to work pretty well. I, I don't, uh, but it, it's a little bit, for me, all I can do is speculate. You know, there, there may be some other people in this group that might want to take on that question. I, I'd have to dig into it a little bit, which is what I mean. Yeah. Like, I get a question like that. I don't I just wonder how many how many people with I mean they see a small store that it's not a brand name they're not on Amazon or they're not you know on some major brand site you know some site yeah, that's no. a small site maybe they feel safer with PayPal. Well, Eric made a, put a post a comment in there. He says, "Yeah, some people hate PayPal and some people will only use PayPal." No. And, okay. Okay. You know, and uh, and I'm not really sure if you can get from Stripe to PayPal. Okay, I don't know if using Stripe if they and if they want to pay. Well, with well, in, in the WooCommerce setup, you can either you can have it that you take both of those, right? You can yeah. take Stripe and PayPal, and so those will both show, and then they can select which one they want to use. People know. like Stripe. I, yeah, they they really like Stripe, and PayPal is like everywhere, and I think that's kind of the thing why you probably want to be able to have both if you can, because you know it's like they want to give you money. Yeah. <laughs> Right. It's just more to keep track of if you have to track your keep your Stripe right. payments and you know, your, yeah. your PayPal payments. But if but, but some people feel like an extra layer of protection when they're using PayPal, you know. Yeah, I. You know, it'd be nice to have just one gateway provider that guarantees it all, but that'll come with expense. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I just don't think. You know, in the old days, people would take credit cards right online, and I just, I just have to tell people, I strongly advise against it. I just, you know, if you got to pay two or three or four percent more, and I think, I think Stripe is two point nine percent plus thirty cents. I think that's their rate. That sounds about right. Yeah. You no, know, which is okay for big ticket items. That's not too bad. But people that are trying to sell small items, you know, stuff that is under ten bucks. And when you got shipping, uh, you know, how do you sell a keychain? <laughs> you know, 
you know, it's, and by the time you ship it and they take the payment and the cost, you know, there's just not enough there, you know, so. And, and do you have any comments on how, how much liability do you have as a developer? I mean, you know, you set up a site for a client and it's using Stripe or PayPal. Yeah. Okay. It's still possible to get hacked and somehow someone can get a hold of those cards, even though you didn't store them on your site. Or is it? Is, is, that, is that such an unlikely event that, you know? No. Well, no, it's something you should consider. The problem is you're asking for a legal opinion here. Yeah. So I'm going to qualify that and say, listen, you, you know, you need to seek counsel. And there's a lot of reasons. But sure. your terms and conditions, your proposal, your scope of work, when you do a website for somebody, and even if you're doing it for a friend, it's worth sc scoping that out and say, listen, we'll use these paid in providers that handle that, but we're not responsible for, you know, if the credit gets hacked, we're not touching the credit cards. The other thing is, is you, you can do stuff like, like images could be a problem. They may give you images that are copyrighted by somebody else. You want to be clear to say, hey, you, you, you need to have license to those images. I'm not responsible if you don't, you know, and the other thing is like taxes and privacy policy. Those things should be in your uh, your contract. You specify in your, your scope of work, and you should put some of that in your uh, footer of your face of, of your website. You should detail some of that stuff. Like you, you know, we don't we're not responsible for that. There's only so much I can do. I've advised you that you need to think about your privacy policy. I advised you you need to be secure and not let these this information out for the risk of being hacked. Right. I, I assume no liability if somebody hacks PayPal and gets into your account. I think that's going to be I think you pr contractually protect yourself is about all you can do. But, okay. you know, there again, it's, you, you know, the laws in California may say, yeah, it doesn't matter. If you're a web builder. You know, it's on you. Right. So. Right. But, yeah, it's a sticky stuff. But the accessibility stuff's another area. It's like. Um, you know, and I've had, I've spent a little time trying tracking down lawyers, trying to find someone that <laughs> a lot of lawyers are not up on a lot of this either. They don't, right? You know, their own websites don't have SL certificates. They don't have privacy policies. They, <laughs> in fairness to the lawyers, that I mean, even though you know we've all heard lawyers' jokes, is that not everybody practices law in the same area. Ninety percent of the lawyers out there are not right for you, not because they're bad lawyers. They don't practice your kind of law. Right. It's become so segmented. And yeah. what we're dealing on the web, digital web presence with the privacy policies and the accessibility and something, that's evolving law. Yeah. The courts can't agree from court to court, from jurisdiction. They, they can't agree from jurisdiction, not only from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, they can't agree from court to court within a ju jurisdiction. So it, it's a little bit of the Wild West. Um, if you have disclosures and you do do some of that write-up and you do kind of document, you got layers of protection. And what I tell people is that even if your privacy policy isn't perfect, when, when the trolling lawyers come through and they see that privacy policy at the in your footer, they're probably not going to dig much more. The reason I'm worried about privacy policies is because I think it's covered in, under the Consumer Protection Act. And when under the Consumer Protection Act, you find there a violation, they award attorney fees automatic. So that's why, that's why I expect more and more people are going to get hit on this this time. But this is all stuff that's happened in the last few years. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a sidebar, probably for a meetup all on it, its own. Right. But, we, but by then, we should bring in a couple of, you know, legal professionals to really address some of that stuff. But it's good that you bring it up. And that's kind of what we would go through these issues. We kind of talk around it. It doesn't mean we get the, the exact right solution. But you can, you know, you know you're, you're never going to solve the problem if you don't understand the problem, right? You're never going to mitigate the risk yeah. if you don't understand the risk. So, so it's worth a, a couple of comments. Speaking of comments. Yeah. Were, were you going to go through a screen share then? Yeah. Did you want me to do that? Well, I, uh, yeah, I, I didn't know if I was, you know, it seemed like I'm talking quite a bit here. So, but I guess we're only an hour. So yeah, I'll do a screen share if you guys want. Well, let's do the installation. Yeah. This will be quick. If we're going to get technical, we'll try the technical questions a little bit later because there's people here, several people that are more advanced technically than me. But just to get a sense of how this works, uh, let's... And you know, on this point, uh, Eric... Uh, a video that I linked at the bottom of the page is the way to go. You should check that out. 
Okay, which one is it? I think it's. Uh... Okay, uh, you guys uh, can see this? Yeah. Okay, uh, what yeah. I did is um, I just went to the WooCommerce.com uh, site themselves, and I I was going to just do it on my that website, that training website, but I <laughs> screwed around with the with the uh, plugin, and then suddenly I couldn't get the wizard to come back. I'd have to go straight to the settings. So I figured, all right, let's just let's just show what they're doing. So if you go to this link that you, that's in that page, you, you'll bring up this page here, and it'll take you through your um, your welcome uh, your uh, installation wizard. It's the, one of the first things that pops up, and it'll start asking you stuff about this. And one of the things I want to start right off is that when you put your address in there, you need to think about that. This is the one thing I learned from Eric last week is that when you put that in and that welcome menu on that on that installation wizard, if you put your address, that address is going to show up in your communications or your invoices when you deal with people. So you should probably get a PO box. You probably get some kind of think about that address when you do that. But you they have to have some kind of way to communicate with you. And they usually need a physical address. And that's probably going to come down to tax law and stuff. So the first thing they're going to want to know is your physical address your postcard and some e email so that they know how they're contacting with you, you know, and then they're going to give you some warnings about sensitive uh, contact uh, content. And that's another thing that Eric advised on is he wasn't big about sharing a lot of your personal information. Now, as we go through this setup wizard, and so if you see in this one, you see my cursor, I can't see the screen, but it has a uh, store details, industry, product type, business deals, and theme. So basically it's going to, you're going to describe your product. You're going to say what industry you're in. Uh, you're going to tell more about you, you know, what size company. That's the kind of question they're going to ask you. If it's not necessary to give it to them, I don't know that you should. Uh, I, I, you know, there's a privacy thing. That's up to you. The last one, they're going to help you uh, select a theme. And you can either do it through them. They'll give you a couple of recommendations when you click on that. Or you can do it through WordPress itself. Whatever theme you activate, It'll, it'll integrate with the WordPress plugin. So integrating with the plugin and WordPress isn't, you know, it, it works pretty smoothly with all the newer block enabled themes. You know, you get an older theme, you might have some problems. Uh, and if it's an older theme and hasn't been updated regularly over the last several years, you have uh, problems on a lot of levels. But the integration of the plugin with the WordPress theme is pretty easy. And this whole wizard works pretty easily too. So anyway, you'll go through the first one. Then, then they're going to ask you stuff about your store details. It's really pretty slick, really. It prompts you to think about things you probably would, if you're just starting out and I'm going to build a, a website, I'm going to build a store, you don't think to ask yourself all these questions. So whether you give them an answer or not, it gives you something to think about. So you can run through this and most people can do this in 15, 20 minutes. You might take an hour. Uh, but as it'll go through, it'll ask more and more information about your um, your company, what you're planning to do, what your store is going to look like. Now, I do want to point out, uh, I think is it on this one screen here that you can see, you can see the stuff at the top. If you click on it, those are free uh, additions or extensions to the plugin. But down below where they got money here, you pay for those. So, you know, now you can get other membership and you can get other uh, booking stuff that for free and that may or may not work with your plugin or Google commerce uh they're trying to upsell you here uh so now if you're doing membership accounts or you're doing bookings or you're selling bundles or you're doing whatever it is what they charge per month may be worth it to you at least i think that's what this is for i didn't i haven't used the wizard in a while so but i just want to point that out is that some of the extensions within the core if you select them that comes with the charge and you'll know it because they'll want your credit card. Uh, you, they, you, they don't need your credit card to give you the core. So the business details, as you go through this, it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so here's the business details. I think they're asking about, how, well, how many employees you got? And, you know, what's your sales per year? Well, if you're doing 200 million a year, they're going to be way more interested in you than if you're doing 200 a week, right? So, whether you share that or not, that's up to you. Now they say that if they know more about you, they give you a better product, but I don't know. You kind of have to be careful with your privacy. So as you read through it, they're going to show a lot of this stuff. Now, some of uh, one thing I want to point out, and I got this from David earlier today, I think the, the one plugin for 
WooCommerce shipping and tax integrates with Jetpack. I don't, I think you got to have that. I think that, so when I looked at that at the repository after you mentioned it, David, I saw it was a free plugin. They're sitting on the repository. Yeah. But for that to work, I think you have to have Jetpack. I think they work together to help getting you the taxes for the various jurisdictions. So you might be aware of that. Uh, another one here is MailPoet. The WooCommerce, the automatic people bought Woo po MailPoet, oh, maybe a little more than a year ago. And one of the things about when you uh, set up the site that's been a recurring problem for some people is sometimes the email notifications don't really work the way they should. And there's some workarounds to make that happen. And I think they bought MailPoet because they want to get a handle on their email and their automatic email deliverable stuff. I haven't used it. I don't know if it's a paid one or not. Hopefully it's free. Um, but there you go. Be aware of that. And there's some other stuff. And as you read through it, you'll decide what's right for you. But I do want to say this with the setup was pretty easy. It's pretty slick. You know, you don't, you don't have to answer all their questions. I mean, maybe some of them they'll say you have to, but for the most part, it's up to you what you share with them. And I think others have recommended, and I tend to agree, is that, you know, don't be too loose with your personal information, you know, if you can. Okay, so, so Ryan, then you get to ask a question there. Uh, yeah, Mike. fire away. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Back up to that. Uh, scroll back to the this the plugins. Yeah. So, so I've noticed that the plugin that I ins have installed is called WooCommerce Shipping and Tax. Yeah. So, is that basically just a combination of those the shipping and the tax plugins? Because it lists I, two separate. And I've seen the, that there's two separate ones, but yeah, I, I noticed that too. I, I don't know the answer, so I didn't want to uh, draw attention to it. But I suspect <laughs> that you have the option of doing one the other or both and i think and i think you probably want to go with the one that you're using the combined one but i don't know maybe somebody's using tax jar but they want to use pirate ship or they want to use woocommerce shipping so i'm thinking yeah, or, these are individual yeah and i can i can imagine the sh sh you know for many people shipping is fairly straightforward you're either doing a flat rate on certain amount, certain items or a free shipping of, of a certain amount so you might only need to tax services you know yeah it's like um well Please. shipping though it comes down to it with and we'll get that in the settings in a little bit and we'll kind yeah. of look at it. it's a little tricky you have to set zones shipping zones so you know five dollars to ship in where you're you're in sacramento there but to right ship to, you know ottawa might be you know, oh it's it's tough to ship if you ever have to ship to, to canada oh what a mess man I yes. Just, you know, <laughs> and is MailPoet a a uh, a replacement for Mailchimp, or is uh, it... I think it competes to some extent. I, I don't. Uh, let me just click and see what we get here. We'll do a little sidebar and see what it says. Yeah, it's in the um, a, 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 a an official WooCommerce plugin. I think it's mostly marketing. I don't know if they do transaction stuff. Hmm. I think it's like, I think it competes with uh, MailChimp. Yeah. Okay. But you've got some recover abandoned carts. It lets you customize your uh, WooCommerce emails. Now, Eric was saying he likes the Cadence email designer, which might be do. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, I have to point out MailPoet because it's WooCommerce. And if you ran into a problem, then somebody's probably run it before and they probably already fixed it over. Right. I mean, yeah, you know, if, you know, it's their baby, you know, if they, if, if they're running WooCommerce and, and male poet and they don't agree, you're blaming WooCommerce, right. Yeah. Where, you know, if it's MailChimp or, you know, some of these other uh, send in blue or whoever they, you know, there's a bunch of them out there. They could say, well, that's their problem. You know, they could can be finger pointing. So I, I pointed out that it, it, it could be a good marketing, email marketing solution, and they may have a lot more functionality in it. I just, I can't, I don't have the, uh, you know, I'm going to have to dig through it for a while. And so, okay, so you choose yeah. the theme. Okay, the store checkout list is stuff that you, makes you prompt you about, okay, you're going to do this, you're going to set this up. Some of this being handled in, a, in another screen, I'm going to show you a little bit, we'll be switching in a minute. Uh,
So it seems like they, I don't know about letting customers install extensions. I'd have to dig into this one a little bit more. But as you go through this and you think about this, you'll, you know, you, it may be a head scratcher here or there. You know, if you don't know, don't activate it. You can always come back. And uh, you're going to get a store up pretty easily. You're going to get some products in there if, if you know how to load up pictures and stuff and you can write a little text and it'll be functioning. You can get it pretty, pretty soon here. Uh, but they do give you some personalization options that you'll have to decide. You, they'll let you customize your homepage. They'll let you do, you, they're just stuff that it, it can go on forever. This is the thing, this is the power of WordPress and, uh, and WooCommerce is that it does so much, but geez, almost on two or three of these things, we probably spent an hour on, which is why I don't want to get too technical. But I do want to point out, it's pretty easy getting it set up. They, they, they take you by the hand. And a lot of it is just checking a box, right? It's just yay or nay, yay or nay. And for a lot of it, it's like, if you don't know, nay, you know, come, you come back. Uh, you are going to have to get a theme on there, though. You, can, you have to have something you can see. Uh, but once that theme's act, activated, you get a couple of product pages, you're going to go to the site and it's going to be there. It's just it's unlikely you won't, uh, you, you, it probably, it's unlikely the, the, the install will fail, at least with the, if you're using this wizard. So the shipping part here, when we get over to settings, it's you have zones and then you have special zones. Like I was in a meetup, where was I at? I don't think, yeah, it might've been, might been a breakout room from that Halifax one. Anyway, the guy's in England, but he had a problem shipping to islands and he didn't wanna to ship to all of England and not to an island where you gotta go up across a ferry. And somebody knew right away, said, well, you set special zones. So that it end by area code. So I think it might've been to the Isle of Man or somewhere like that. So normally if you're like a, uh, the Eastern seaboard, you know, you're one zone. And if you're the Midwest, you're one zone. And that way that you can do variable shipping rates. Most people are gonna say five, 10 bucks, you know, or charge a little extra because they don't wanna mess with it. it. It is a little sticky. That's one area that's uh, a little tough. Uh, but you can integrate with some of these plugins, free plugins, where they will print labels for you. They'll help you with a lot of that. Now, pirate shipping is one that uh, we've been using a little bit, uh, but there's a bunch of them. And a WooCommerce has a shipping uh, one, too. Uh, I can't speak to how well that works. Uh, it sounds like you've been using it a little, David, and must be must be getting the job done. Yeah. Uh, it, mine's fairly simple, though. I only ship to the U.S. and I yeah. have a flat rate, and then over $50, it's free. So, yeah, that's how that's yeah. most people will just want to go flat rate. I'll charge a little extra just, you know, you know, and even, you know, if they buy 50 bucks and I lose two dollars in shipping, it's still a 50 dollar sale. Right, right. That's exactly what I'm taking. <laughs> okay. So now we talked about the taxes a little bit earlier, and this is where you get to decide which one you want to use. You can WooCommerce tax or you can do Alvera or you can import one of the other ones. They give you the option in the setup wizard here. Confirm your location again. Be careful about mailing to your home because people will see your home and, hey, you sold me a black tennis shoes when I wanted white tennis shoes. I'm coming to get you, you know. So, so the rest of this is going to be on a case by case basis. See, there you go. There's your uh, uh, payment providers that you can decide right in there and just set up, click away. You know, they're going to want a credit card when you do that, though. So, before you jump into that, make sure you know what credit card you're going to do and you have your PIN number. And you're in a, I can't remember exactly what you go through, but uh, you're going to have to roll through uh, uh, some kind of a, a authentication, verification to, to a credit card. Now, there are, uh, you can do crypto now too. Uh, I haven't done it yet. I, I don't know. I, I'm guessing most people just starting out with WooCommerce and WordPress probably aren't big crypto dealers, but. Uh, but there's that pay, uh, uh, functionality too. And I think it may be in Stripe and PayPal, but I, I can't say for sure. Okay, here's your marketing tools. Huh. I see they show MailChimp, they show MailPoet. So it's both MailPoet, yeah, they're both recommended as uh, marketing extensions. I was wondering if they're using MailPoet as a transactional email. So those are the just figuring this stuff out, just learning about WooCommerce. You have your transactional emails, the one that, okay, they're going to order something. You're sending them a, a notification, a, a confirmation of their sale. That has to do with the, around the transaction. That could be one email, 
address. But another email may be a weekly newsletter where you're sending out promotions or you're talking about the, the new product that's coming. We got the best barbecue. It's super, super turbo charge. You're going to be hit at any tailgating game with this, with this new turbo barbecue setup, right? And so you hype your stuff through, and that would be the marketing side of that. And that's what MailChimp is really known for. I don't think people use MailChimp too much for transaction emails. I think they use that through the email setup with WooCommerce. And there's a couple of tricks there. And for a lot of the beginners, you probably want to hire someone like Eric for a half hour, an hour, just to get your email set up uh, once you know what emails are, because that can be turned into the dark arts in a hurry if you're not careful. Uh, it is one area that people get... Uh, get hung up on. Okay, so store management, you, you know, they're, they're prompting about all that stuff that you've gone through. You can go through the wizard again if you need to. And even if you're not a uh, paid subscriber, typically if you send them an email, they will respond to you. Okay, so now let's go, we're gonna jump to a different window here. And it's called configuring WooCommerce settings, which is, kind of what we've already been doing a lot, but if you've already got your site, you're gonna go in there and change something, or if you're not sure, you go to the you go to this general settings uh, window here, and you just, you, under WooCommerce, you look down, there'll be settings, get on settings, and you're gonna get a window, I can find it here. Uh, anyway, in the settings, you're gonna set, um, you know, currencies, you're gonna set decimal points, you're gonna, you know, what date you're showing on your pages, you know, all that little detail stuff. But what I want to get you to, if I can find it here, is this page. This is what it's going to look like when you first get there. So under general, some of the stuff that we just I quickly scrolled through, um, you know, you're going to you're going to say, hey, I'm, I'm in U.S. currency and I'm in this time zone and I want to use this date format and I want to use, you know, that general stuff is under general. And then you can get into your product about, you know, things about your inventory, how you get notified, when you get notified, you know, some of that stuff you probably won't know quite how to set it up when you're first starting out, right? How you manage the stock, but you know, you just come back a little bit later. Okay, here's your tax thing. I don't think the tax thing is gonna be enough for most people. You know, if I'm still on products a little bit here. I wanna, I wanna kind of keep, I don't wanna go too slow on, on this stuff because it, you know, we're never gonna remember all this anyway. But in your tax settings, you can go in there and you can enable it. But most people, that if you're selling across a lot of jurisdictions, you're going to want a, a tax plug-in, make your life easier, unless you want to be like all day on uh, uh, dealing on tax rates and stuff, and then having to file all these different reports. It's, it's a real pain. Uh, okay, so shipping is something that uh, is a little trippy too. So there you can add the calculations to your cart. And when you do that, you have to get in here and set up your your uh, your zones, your shipping zones. And I'm not seeing it here right now. Oh, here it is. Okay, yeah. shipping zones. So it'd be up in here. You'll click on that, a window will come up and there'll be some guidance about how you set your zones. And all, all of these, sub, this, uh, this second menu here is how you deal with your zones and your classes. Now your classes, I think is like, okay, five pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds. Uh, it's you know it's 12 by 12 or it's you know it's or it's a refrigerator size you know you know so they give you a lot of um uh you know uh, you can customize it but i but i, I caution that hey, you're gonna have to take a couple of runs at that to get around to understand how woo's doing it uh but the, but the power is there you can set all this stuff and you know, if you come to a couple of uh, WooCommerce meetings, you know, any of your rough spots, there's usually somebody around that's going to sort out in a hurry. So payment settings, you know, that a lot of that depends on the payment gateway you're using, but it gives you the, the power to do that. Uh, is that automated there? Because I don't think that's me. Oh, they're showing you how you move stuff around within that window. Okay. And then how you enable uh, I don't do bank direct tra bank transfers, but you know, I do take checks. I know that. So, you know, in fact, I prefer to take checks because there's no transaction charges, right? But so anyway, okay. Here's a kind of an important one: accounts of private settings. They're gonna you go through there and you're gonna check all this stuff out. And it'll prompt you. And you can decide what each one of them means, but it kind of lets you know um, what you're doing with the people's privacy and stuff. And if I 
is this when you erase the somewhere along in here you're going to be able to tell woocommerce to delete the information after a certain period of time i, I don't remember exactly when it's at but uh I don't think it's here because I, I don't see how you can set the time. But, but anyway, this is your uh, has to do with your checkout pages. I mean, you'll usually it goes into a cart as they're shopping around, and then they go to the checkout page, and then they finalize it. And all they have those pages all set up for you, and you can play around with them. And uh, there's a gentleman in here, uh, Gerald, who I mentioned earlier, that you can. There's plugins that will help you customize all of those pages too, particularly the product pages. That give you more functionality than what Woo gives you right out of the box. Oh, personal data removed. This is what I'm looking for right here. So somewhere in here, you're going to be able to tell it to say, "Hey, I'll keep it till, you know, three months after I delivered the product, uh, uh, or annually I'll get rid of it, or after 12 months delete this stuff because we don't want problems with the state or feds." There we go. Say this one, they don't retain them. Pending orders, retain failed orders. They, you get a little bit of granular control over what you do or how, how you retain this, uh, this information. And most of it's gonna be email, mailing addresses is really what you're gonna have in here. There may be some other stuff, you know, you know product sizes or... Okay, uh, WordPress personal data exporter. Okay, I'm not going to get into that, but there's a way to migrate information here. You know, some people may find that useful. So they're going to take all that personal data and put it into another file. You got to be careful. This is this is the kind of stuff that you have to disclose, or you're supposed to disclose in your privacy policy but you have that power. So if you're trying to build a spreadsheet or, or you're taking all this information, you're putting it into a uh, marketing email, right? That'd be an example of, of out. Here's your email settings. So you, have, you can able to, you'd be notified if you get a new order, you get uh, you know, you canceled order, a failed order. You can, I actually have had problems getting the email to work a couple of times. Uh, eventually I figured it out. Some people, they use a, a plugin called SMT, STP, SMTP, smart mail, something. Uh, but there's three or four to get around that. But WooCommerce has known they've had a problem because when I went looking to resolve the problem and I kept searching through the internet, there was a bunch of people complaining about this, the same thing. Um, typically in this area, I kind of revise if you're just getting started, uh, maybe get, get an email professional. I mean, it's one thing getting a Gmail account. I think we can all do that or Yahoo or whatever the free ones are. And you can even put one associated with your web, your website. But really, when you're doing transaction emails and you're doing notifications, and you're marketing emails. It's best that you're not hosting that right on your, your, uh, your, your hostings, your website hosting site. You should use a dedicated email server. Most likely, it's going to be Google or Microsoft because you won't get flagged as spam. Your stuff's more likely to go through. There's servers and there's services that dedicate to make sure those that stuff goes through. Uh, getting it all set up, you got to go in and fix your DNS settings and change your DMX records. And there's some other stuff that you can do. Uh, that uh, Eric's a great one to contact if you need someone to help you set up your e emails. Uh, but it'll keep you off a, a blacklisted, right? You can get on a list because you're sitting. You can get on a blacklist because you're sitting on a shared server and somebody else on that shared server is sending out a bunch of crap and then it, and because your email is associated with you that next thing you know you're blacklisted so the email thing can really be a, you know i don't like to advise too much in this area the controls are here you can click on the side here and manage each one of them people have been around email for a while know what they're doing or they got a buddy or they know somebody a relative that knows email you'll probably get through it okay so more email templates and send options. You know, they can let you change the colors and the fonts and do stuff with the emails that you send. They give you a lot of power. Uh, a lot of people use plugins like that Cadence uh, email designer for enhanced uh, editing uh, capabilities, uh, customization. Uh, yeah, the email part though, man, and that's, that's, that's probably to, in some ways can, can be the toughest for beginners is getting all that right. Uh, but once it's set, once it's set, it tends to work for a long time. It's uh, 
So what else we have? We have advanced settings. You can do stuff with the cart page. These drop down menus will let you do stuff. Um, yeah, you can get your terms and conditions on your checkout page. That's always a good idea to do. Um, the secure checkout, well, I was talking a little earlier that some of these people don't use SSL certificates. For, for the beginners, an SSL certificate is kind of required by um, Google anymore. If you don't have it, the Google search engines will downgrade you. A lot of times if people go to your website, you get a big warning, not secure. And if you're doing transactions, uh, I, I think they're blocked. Uh, you have to have, the, it's called an SSL certificate. Now, most of your hosting providers, a lot of them will provide it for free and then others will charge you. And then there's other plugins that will do it for you. Uh, hopefully you got a, a hosting company that's good enough that will provide the SSL cert certificate or you go through Cloudflare and get it. Uh, but if you don't have it, it's a problem. It, it flags your site. You, you, people may come to your website and, and there'll be a big red warning, warning, Site is unsecure. You guys, if you've been around the internet, you probably see it every once in a while. Uh, that's what you get when you don't have an SL certificate. Not always, but it, it can happen. And they won't rank you. The, Google won't rank you. So, But terms and conditions is something that depends on your particular business, and your risk profile. And, but you should always have something in there saying, hey, we, we don't steal from people. We don't steal their credit cards. We're good guys. You know, hopefully, you're not a bad guy. How would that work? So the rest of this is, you know, it's a lot of detail. That, that is the one thing. There's so much here that uh, if you're just starting, you may want to just do the wizard first, go have a cup of coffee, and then maybe come back and do a little bit more and maybe not bite it all off at one time. A lot of this you don't even have to do, and you're still going to have a page, you're still going to have a website, it's still going to be up and running, and you can go play around with your uh, building out your pages and your product pages and work on that for a little while and then come back to this this uh, detailed stuff, this nitty gritty stuff that can be very, very tedious. So they've got REST APIs, webhooks, stuff to give you more functionality, work with other plugins and, and services. And, and that's pretty much the settings there. Um, if you ever set up a website and you just uh, install the WordPress, uh, well, you, you get a hosting provider, you have a domain name, and then you install WordPress and you set up a theme, and you download the WordPress plugin, it's gonna be, let me just do this right now, I'll show you. I mean, most of you probably know this, but let's go to the dashboard. Let's go to plugins, install plugins. You'll have your site, you have your website, you build it out and you're gonna get this one right here, WooCommerce, it's just gonna be set right there and they'll give you details about it, there'll be community support. And then once you do that, you're gonna get the WooCommerce, you're going to see the home orders, customized coupons, reports, settings, status. You're going to have products, you're going to have analytics, you have marketing capability. All of that's going to be right under, well, no, I guess I'm, I'm pretty sure the product page is a part of it, is part of Woo. But anyway, it'll be right on your dashboard. And so I would recommend, you know, get a staging site or, you know, let's just say you're going to do a dog grooming service or you're going to do, uh, you're going to be an arborist, you know. The trees are us, right? You can build your little website, trees are us, and put in Woo WooCommerce and then just start playing around with it. And, you know, if, if it goes wrong, uninstall it. Start over. It's pretty easy. Just delete it and start over again. And, you know, some people will probably need to do that. But, it, it, you know, if you give yourself a little time, and the biggest thing I'm going to say about all this is don't be discouraged. It's easy to be a little discouraged because. Uh, it doesn't make sense. It's not intuitive. It's frustrating. I'm spending a lot of time. I'm not getting anywhere. And then you go to a, a WordPress meetup and they, the guys know so much that, it, or they'll be, you know, that you'll feel dumb because you don't know what they're talking about. You can't understand it. It's just layers of exposure. If you just keep, stay with it, the WooCommerce would be a very, very valuable tool. You know, learn WordPress, you learn uh, a WooCommerce. And you spend a little time with it and you get it so you can make these. You, now you got a skill that's in demand, especially these days when people are, are migrating to the web more and more. You know, not for everybody. Not everybody wants to sit in front of a, 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 a computer monitor and do this kind of stuff. Because when you get into it, there, <laughs> there's a lot. I mean, you, you, how do you handle your images, right? How do you handle your fonts? How do you handle your formatting? You know, it just, it, 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 it can feel like quicksand after a while. But 
if you stay with it and you start learning, it all gets easier and easier and easier. And if you go to these meetups or you go to these forums and you just sit like a fly on the wall and just listen, you're, you just start to understand it. It's just, oh, that's how they do it. Oh, that's how they do the menus. Oh, that's, oh, I couldn't understand how I could get a, 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 a drop down menu. And then, man, that is so easy. How could I miss it? And it's kind of like that. And once you get it, it becomes pretty easy. But getting it sometimes can be, you know, a little bit, a little bit of a road, road to haul. Okay, any questions? And thank you for your patience. Thank you for being a guinea pig on my first presentation here. Oh, uh, thank you, Michael. Um, hey, I have one question. Okay. Did you go to WooCommerce settings and then tax? So uh, right where you are on the screen you're on. No, no, no on, on the okay. back end of the site that you were. Oh, just, right. Yeah, okay. there you go. So go to WooCommerce and then settings. Oh, okay, I got you, okay. Settings, click that. Okay. And then go to, oh, you, there's no tax tab because you have taxes turned off. So enable taxes, tax rates and calculations. There okay. You go. And then go back up. Okay, yeah, I think you might need to save that um, uh, or just plain update, go down, go down and update. Oh, yeah, I got you. Save changes. Yeah, this, this install, I haven't uh, uh, okay. installed this yet. Okay. Now okay, you go to tax is. tab, so go there. All right. And then go standard rates. Uh, it's the very top right under the tag. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And so, so right there, you can enter, like if you were selling, like right now for my store, and my, I just have a small store and it's really a, just an experiment for me to learn WooCommerce, to be honest with you. I mean, mostly. And, but I really only have Nexus in California because if you look at the, 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 the what's required to get Nexus in other states, you know, it's like either a hundred products or a hundred thousand dollars or whatever. Yeah. You know? So I, at the moment, I'm not concerned about establishing so what, what, Nexus. What is, what is Nexus? Is it a... Nexus means you owe tax there. You have a presence there that owns... That, 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 ne, you, have, oh. you, have, you automatically have Nexus where you live or where you're operating from. So, so it's, I, an, it's an acronym for, for some kind of tax. It's a, it's a tax accounting word. Okay. Yeah, Nexus. I've seen it in the Wu documentation. Okay. Yeah, ne Nexus is you have automatic Nexus when you uh, in in the in the state that you live in or the, where you're operating the business from. You have the Nexus in any states where you have employees, and you have Nexus in any states where you have um, a warehouse. So if things are shipping from a particular place. Uh, that establishes nexus. And then you have what's called economic nexus if you surpass certain thresholds in certain states. So in some states that might mean if you sell 200 products in, our, in this state, you now need to start pay, collecting sales tax and, and, and paying us, right? So, but it takes a while to get there. I mean, so for, for me, I, you know, I, I'm only concerned with California. Okay. okay. So there's an import as the CSV down at the, on the lower right there. Uh, uh, you mean right over here? You got it. Yeah. Okay. So you can import a, a CSV file that, that gives all the breakdown of the jurisdictions in California um, that basically would take care of uh, all your, your, your tax rates for all the different counties and cities in California. So would that be like a Microsoft? Excel spreadsheet or yeah, you, and you can yeah you can export you can export those as CSV comma comma separated values. Okay, right. Okay, is there a place where there's the official CSV files of all the rates per, per, per state? Is there somewhere to get that? Because you, you know, can enter them. You can go through. You can go to the state, the California state tax you know, uh, sales tax website, I can't remember what it's called. And you can look up what the tax rate is in Modesto, California, or San Jose, California. I'm pretty sure uh, Avalara or whatever it's pronounced has a, has a spreadsheet like that. Oh, I, really? I, I, downloaded, I downloaded one from somewhere, I, I, long ass time ago, but I believe it was from their site. Oh, okay, okay, I'll check that. Is that, is that Mark? Yeah, that was me. Yeah, that's, that sounded like No, I, I think I read that earlier too. They update those files every month is what they said. 
if that's the one. There's a couple of them that actually do it. I don't know if they you get the entire spreadsheet though from them. Yeah. Yeah. I think you you go, I think it is Avalara. You put in like your email and then you pick your state and then it sends you, I think it's a CSV. It might be an Excel or something, but I'm pretty sure it's a CSV. Uh, the, even if it's Excel, you can always export it as a yeah, CSV. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool, that's good to know. That's good yeah. to know. Because that yeah. right there for many businesses would cover taxes uh, until you start selling enough products that you establish economic nexus in other states. Yeah, if you're selling regionally or something, or you're yeah. selling, you know- if you're like selling I'm in the US, say, you know, in each state has their rules about you can you can sell an e-commerce store that's in California can sell to customers in Minnesota until you sell 200 products. You take, make, make 200 sales, we start wanting sales tax. Yeah. You know, some that, states that, that, like 200,000. You can some so you're exempt some some states up to the first 200,000. Uh, yeah, it's like that. Yeah, it's it's usually like a dollar amount or or a number of transactions. Yeah, I think is often the way it it, it sounds. It varies from state to state, but that's called establishing economic nexus in that state. Okay, that's okay. And that's um, I think with Tax Jar and those guys and Avalara, if I'm saying it correctly, do they yeah. they they track until you cross thresholds in the states and then start saying. Hey, you now still you now owe sales tax in Idaho or whatever. Yeah. You know those are uh, paid programs. I think cloud. I, if, if I think uh, tax cloud was originated by the treasurer's offices of like twenty five states or thirty states got together, and what they were trying to do was they're going some kind of uniform way, and they created a app or a, 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 a plugin. A year ago or year two years ago and at that time it was free now i went to the website a week and a half ago and it looks like it's a paid plugin now hmm. if i'm remembering correctly but i have a feeling they're going to be pretty competitive and i always like the fact well if it's the tax authorities in a particular jurisdiction and they're saying that's the way and they're producing the product because what they were trying to do is they weren't trying to make money off the service they just wanted to collect the tax and it was worth them to provide a free service to get compliance. Now, this whole industry has evolved in the last five, 10 years. These, these plugins have become much more efficient, easier to use. Um, I can't speak with any authority because I haven't used those because the ones that we're doing are pretty small and it's easy enough to go, you know, when, when we do the tax reports, we just look up the schedules, plug it in. But, you know, we're not doing 10,000 transactions a day either. We don't, we don't have those kind of problems. Yeah. <laughs> so any other questions? That's a good one though. Thank you for pointing out that import uh, feature. And so Eric says that most states allow you to download their, their rates on a CSV, like at their tax, like at their, uh, their websites for their so, yeah, usually you can go to the uh, the state comptroller's website and download the uh, the tax rates for the state. Oh, okay. And that's that CSV file imports right into into WooCommerce then. Uh, no, you're going to need a hammer to make it fit. <laughs> um, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> but uh, but at least it's got at least it's got the rates. The uh, I mean the export for uh, uh, you can you can generate a single tax rate in the in uh, woo do an export so that you've got the exact format that they want and then just move the move the columns around in the spreadsheet that they give you to and dump all the extra garbage gotcha because gotcha. uh, for instance texas um we have a city a county and a state rate and they put them in separate columns so we have to know oh in the city of in the city of dallas you get you pay half a percent and Dallas County, you pay half a percent, and then the state is six and a quarter percent. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so you have to add, you have to know just to add them all together. So you, a hammer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I, I think I have the Excel skills to pull it up. Yeah. <laughs> was that Ethan talking? Or who, who was that that was talking? Oh, uh, Eric. Oh, Eric. Eric. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then, and then the thing is, those things change. And so you would have to be updating your 
your your tax table that's in WooCommerce, and, and how do you even know when they change? Uh, that that's why in Texas we just say screw it eight and a quarter because it's the max that they'll charge in any county. We charge to everybody. Um, and then for um for when we've got it real difficult, that's that's when I'll actually use the uh, shipping and taxes plugin and just let it automate. Yeah, or or one of those plugins. Yeah, any of those plugins. Yeah, I mean, can you actually charge the maximum rate though? And and it, I guess as long as you. Because when you sit, when you report the taxes, you have to say with with jurisdiction the sale. You know, you got to break it down by jurisdiction. You'd you'd have money left over, right? Nah, just send, <laughs> the, just send send the just send the whole thing. Oh, okay. Send the whole thing. It's it's easier. Te- Texas Texas doesn't doesn't really know what the hell we're doing. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, before I close this screen out, is there anything in this uh, settings or anything around Woo that you want, anybody want to take a quick look at before I close her down? Very good. We're good. Yeah. Appreciate everybody uh, suffering through. Everybody awake? Anybody still awake? One of you. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> We, we're, we're drinking, but we're here. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it easier. More tolerable. Hey, we still got a good, uh, we got 17 people still on the line here. That's good. Yeah, That's setting good. it up is pretty tedious. It, it can put you to sleep. There's so much of it. I, I think maybe, this is what I'm trying to figure out, is, well, how do I explain that to people that have never been around it before? And it may yeah. be that you break it up into like, you know, four sessions or something and not, not try to bite off so much, you know, because it, it, it almost at every point I could have spent a lot more time, but I'm not so sure it's productive. Right. So. Yeah. And, and there's tons of good tutorials on all this stuff out there too. I found some really good tax stuff and some shipping. I found a, a great shipping zones tutorial just a couple weeks ago so you know there's there's if you go on youtube and look up any of these things any topic um, you want to know there's someone's talking about it out there so. linkedin learning's got stuff um hmm. youtube yeah if you dig around and if you get into a build and you get in a situation you need to hire a contract or something eric is pretty much the woo master he's got a bunch of woo sites so cool how would we get a hold of Eric? I got a link at the bottom there. Oh. So I, at the, I'll, the I'll throw I'll throw my email address in the chat window. Thanks, cool. Eric. Thanks, Eric. All right, everybody. Well, I think that wraps it up for tonight. Thanks for hanging in there. We went a little overboard uh, on the time, but uh, it was great. That was great, Michael. Thank you. Um, and then uh, next month, it's on the 1st again, so it'll sneak up on you, March 1st. Uh, we've got uh, one of the guys from Beaver Builder, who is actually local in the Sacramento area. They're in the Sacramento area. They're up somewhere up I-80. I never quite remember exactly. They're either in Auburn or Lincoln or, or something, Rockland, somewhere up there. Somewhere up I-80 that way. <laughs> but uh, they're going to do a little uh, overview of Beaver Builder which will be really cool. One of the major page builder plugins for, for WordPress. So that'd be really cool. Looking forward to it. All right, everybody. Shall we wrap it up? All right. Uh, I'm hungry, so uh, I'm ready for dinner. And uh, we'll catch you guys uh, in a month. It'll be here before we know it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you all.